Welcome back dear listener let's start today's story. My wife two time me with her affair partner, we teamed up to expose her lies in front of everyone. I, 28 male, always thought I had the perfect marriage like everybody else posting here. That delusion came crashing down when I discovered that my wife, Sarah, 27 female, has been leading a double life for years. I'm still working through this complicated issue, but I thought sharing my thoughts here would help me get my head straight. Plus, you guys get out with advice if you have any. Sarah isn't a stay-at-home mom, who's always been devoted to family. Not just our family, but family in general. She's the type of woman who's always talking to her parents and always reminding me to check in with my parents and siblings too. She grew up in a large family with two sisters and one brother, and she gets along great with all of them and their spouses and children. She'd always been looking forward to us starting a family over our own one day, and recently, we'd finally started trying. Sarah is the glue that holds her family together, maybe because she's the oldest daughter or because she's just a family-oriented person, but nothing goes on in her family without passing through her first. So it wasn't surprising that she took up the task of taking care of her mother once. She got sick, her parents live alone, and they're both getting up in their age. So they needed help now that her mom was ill. And at first, Sarah visited her parents every weekend, since they lived out of town, the trip seemed to take up a toll on her, but she never complained. Sometimes she was reluctant to leave for their place and always seemed drained when she returned, but she always went anyway. Like I said, she'd do anything for her family. That changed after a month though. She started to get more eager to go to her parents' place. She would leave earlier on the week, and there were a couple of times when she didn't return until Monday. I didn't think much of it until she came home on Monday and told me she needed to leave. On Wednesday, I had to put my foot down and remind her that she had a family back here too. She apologizes that her parents really needed help around the house, but she stayed home and left on Friday instead. Sarah's absence was starting to call us some strain on her home. I tried to be understanding, but having my wife gone three or four days a week every week wasn't easy for me. I was starting to miss her. Also by this time, we had just decided to start trying for a baby, and her absence made that difficult. She was gone much of the week, and she was usually very tired when she got home. She wouldn't really be herself until a day had passed since her return. So we really only had a day or two a week to try for a kid, and if you've ever been in that position, you'll know that's not enough. One day I brought this up to her. I tried to be gentle about it, and not sound like I was accusing her. I told her that I understood her mother needed her, but I did too. I let her know how tough it was for me to be apart from her, and I reminded her that we couldn't try for a baby if she wasn't around most of the time. She immediately burst into tears. She said I was blaming her for not being able to start a family, and she said she felt like a bad mother, even to a child we hadn't had yet. I convinced her that I wasn't blaming her, and I reassured her that she would be a great mom. Once she calmed down, we worked out a compromise. She would stay three days a week with her parents. She wasn't too thrilled about that, but she agreed that it was what was best for our family. I thought things would improve after that conversation, but that's when I started to notice the distance between us. Before I thought it was a result of her being tired all the time, but now I was obvious that she was sort of disconnected. Even though she was here physically, it often felt like she was somewhere else. The intimacy wasn't there anymore. We were still trying for a baby, but it felt routine. There was no passion or creativity in it anymore. Apart from sex, the little things were missing. The random kisses, small touches, and cuddling before going to bed were all gone. I didn't have the heart to bring it up for a while. I thought she might be stressed from caring for her mom every week, and I didn't want her to think I was blaming her again. I didn't want to risk another emotional episode, so I kept quiet, but I couldn't 
checked the feeling that something was wrong. Then everything changed. I got a Facebook message from a guy named Jake. He said he needed to talk to me about Sarah. That raised a bunch of alarms in my mind, but he refused to elaborate. He just repeated over and over that we needed to talk because it wasn't a matter that could be discussed online. I was curious, but I also wanted to be cautious. This was a stranger talking about my wife and demanding to meet me in person. I thought about it for a while and decided that there was no harm in meeting him in a public place. So he said about meeting at a cafe, a reasonable distance from my house. The Jake I met at the cafe was very different from the one I saw online. He was the same person, but in real life, Jake looked uneasy and had bags under his eyes. As he hadn't been sleeping. I couldn't tell if he was nervous or sad about something. When he saw me, he lifted a hand and came over to sit with me. He said hi and sat there fidgeting for a while. I asked him why he was messaging me about my wife and he replied. I've been seeing Sarah for a few months. That hit me like a ton of bricks. I didn't say anything at first because I was busy processing what I just heard. I didn't want to believe it, but he kind of explained the recent distance between us. He kept going before I could respond and explained that he thought he had been the only one dating her. He would meet up with her whenever she came around to her parents' city, which happened to be where he lived, too. He eventually found out that she was married when Facebook randomly suggested me to him. As a friend, he had checked out my account and found out that I was married to his girlfriend. Somehow, this was worse than finding out my wife had been cheating on me. She had been leading this guy on. She had a whole other life for the boyfriend in another city. I hate to admit that I was in denial, but for a second, I thought this was some elaborate joke. When I finally spoke, I threatened him to stay away from me and my wife. I said I wasn't amused and he should try his grift on someone else. Jake didn't respond. He just pulled out his phone and showed me some pictures of him and Sarah. There were pictures of the two of them on dates together in a restaurant in a park, sitting in a car. She wasn't just sleeping with some rando. She was dating him. Somehow that made the betrayal even worse. Jake told me that he started to suspect her when she never took him back to her house. He had insisted on more than one occasion, but she said he had a much nicer place than her. When Facebook had suggested me as a follower, he saw her and my profile pic with me and checked out my account, where I had dozens of images that made it obvious that we were married. That didn't check out and I told him so. I said that if he checked her social media, he would have seen a few pictures of us together. I remember specifically that she had posted a set of images from a vacation that we had taken in the year before. Jake just shrugged and said he didn't see anything. I pulled out my phone and brought up my wife's social media. I scrolled through it and sure enough, I had been completely scrubbed out. I couldn't believe it. She had really deleted every post that had me in it. Just to hide me from her affair partner? And of course, there was no reason for me to go back after she posted them the first time. I wouldn't have if Jake hadn't brought a reason for me too. It was like I didn't know who she was. Jake said that he was sorry and that he regretted having to hurt me like this. The emotional part of my brain was mad at him but didn't want to accept his apology, but the logical side realized he was a victim too. Maybe not as much of a victim as I was, since he wasn't the one whose marriage had turned out to be a lie, but he was still a victim. I sighed and told him I understood and thanked him for making the hard choice. She's been telling me she was with her mom every weekend. She would probably with you half this time. Jake nodded and confirmed that she told him she was taking care of her mom. He had thought it was weird when she would disappear for a few days of that explanation. And assured that that was when she was with her mom. Apparently her mom was the excuse for both of us. He'd never thought to question it because he trusted her, just like me. We talked some more and the pieces fell into place. It turned out that she was a very careful liar, most of what she told Jake about herself was the truth about her family 
what she did for work, and her mom's illness. So she wouldn't slip up by accident and reveal herself to Jake. She only lied to Jake about being married and where she lived. She had taken advantage of her role as a devoted daughter to keep us from thinking too deeply about any inconsistencies. Jake asked me how I wanted to go about this. He said he'd wanted to confront her at first, but he thought that I deserved to know before. He made a decision like that. I respected that. I told him that I needed some time to think first and made him promise not to tell her anything until I figured out what to do. He agreed and we exchanged contact information. I've talked to Jake a few times since then. He's a pretty nice guy and he's asked a few times if I've decided what to do next, but he hasn't pushed. I'm still trying to figure out how to approach this and I'd appreciate some advice from anyone who's been in a similar situation. I'm really sorry you're going through this OP. Sarah created this whole other world while keeping you in the dark, which is a betrayal of it's hard to wrap your head around. Honestly, I don't feel bad for Jake. You're the one left pinging up the pieces with this dumpster fire, not him. Update. I never could have expected my post to blow up the way it did. I posted this looking for advice on how to move forward and I got a dozen different opinions. Some people called me a loser for not knocking Jake out right in the cafe. Trust me, I felt like it at first, but like I said, he was a victim too. Be reasonable. Some people asked if I became friends with Jake. I kind of feel like we're pals now, like I said, he's a really nice guy and he's been surprisingly supportive. I tried to support Jake too, though it felt weird to me at first. He'd been dating and sleeping with my wife, but he had been betrayed and was deeply hurt by it. He often talked about how he felt used. Jake had been looking for a serious relationship and he'd been hopeful that he had found him. One in Sarah. It was yet another major disappointment he had experienced at the hands of women. When I mentioned to Jake that we'd been trying for a baby, he couldn't hide his horror. He was shocked that she would cheat on me while we were actively trying to conceive, but he also confessed that he was scared of thinking of what she could have done if she had gotten pregnant. Would she have tried to pass his kid off his mind, or mine off as his? The idea made me shiver too and deepen my resentment towards my wife. Before I get into it, I found out another lie my wife had been hiding. One night I got curious and wondered to find out if my wife had even been going to visit her mom at all. I called her mom and she answered along with her husband. I made some small talk and asked if they had seen Sarah recently. They both looked at me like I was being weird. We saw her just last week, don't you remember? I nodded and asked how long she stayed. She just dropped in for a night. She hasn't been staying long ever since Abby. Sarah's mom got better, so her mom wasn't sick anymore, but she'd been using that as a perfect cover to keep slipping away. At this point, I was harboring some pretty dark feelings against Sarah. Not enough to do anything stupid, but I was having a hard time hiding how it was feeling. And she noticed. Now I was the one who was distant. She'd start asking me if I was okay and I gave her vague answers most of the time. We'd stop trying for a baby completely and she took it up with me. She wasn't getting gentle like I'd been with her. She shouted at me and said that we would never be able to start our family if I kept turning her away whenever she tried to initiate. It took all my self-restraint to keep myself from shouting that I didn't want to start a family with her anymore. Instead, I kept my cool and told her that I was having a bad week at work. She seemed to buy it and got off my back. I'd planned out how I was going to get back at her and I spoke to Jake about it. He was satisfied with the idea. We both knew the best way to hurt her would be to get her in front of her family. They all saw her as a saint and whether she'd admit it or not, that perception was important. To her. I set things in motion by telling her I felt like throwing a small burrow cube. The weather was perfect for it and it had been a while since I'd fired up the grill. She didn't suspect me for a second. She knows I loved a grill. We invited some friends and family, but she left out her parents. When I pointed that out, 
she said her mom was too sick to move around, but I insisted. The pressure would be good for her. She refused to budge and I pulled the trick that Jake had provided me with. I said, if she's that ill, shouldn't we go get her real hospital? I even put some fake concern on my face. She folded immediately and said it wasn't that serious and that her mom could use some socializing. With that settled, we started organizing to get together and I let Jake in on the details. The weekend of the barbecue came around and we got quite a few guests around. Her whole family was there, like I said, she has a lot of pool with them. It was the perfect setup. Everyone was laughing, eating, and catching up, just like a normal family gathering. Zero was in her element, chatting with her siblings, taking care of her mom, who admittedly still looked a bit sickly and generally just holding things together. The whole time I'd been texting back and forth with Jake, coordinating her moves. When it was time, I took my wife by the hand to where her family was seated and announced that I had a new friend I wanted them to meet. Zero I've looked at me, but I looked at the corner of the house where Jake was walking. In from. When Jake walked in, he smiled and waved in our direction. Sarah's parents waved back, but she froze. Then she frantically looked back and forth between me and him. The shock on her face was worth it already. I'd like everybody here to meet my new friend Jake. Sarah, I believe the two of you have met? Sarah didn't answer me. She nearly jogged over to where Jake was and tried to drag him out. Jake resisted her and she kept trying to pull him away. Now she was causing a scene and soon all eyes were on them. Sarah's mom asked what was going on and Jake spoke up. He said he had a confession to make. Sarah kept pulling him and started saying, please, please, I'll explain. For a moment, I was mad that she was trying to explain to him, but she didn't care enough. To talk to me, her husband. Maybe it was because she knew that I already knew everything or it could be that she thought. Jake could do the most damage in that moment. Maybe she never really cared about me and Jake was the one she wanted to be with. Either way, she was clinging on to Jake in front of her family, pleading with him. Even before Jake explained, I could hear people whispering and caught the word of fair. I've been dating Sarah for a few months now. I have no idea that she was married until recently and I thought everybody should know. The entire yard was murmuring now. Her family all looked shocked and disbelieving. Sarah had stopped pulling at him and she was just looking at her family. I thought I was the only one in her life. We even talked about getting married one day. Now Sarah freaked out. I don't know who he is, he's lying. I looked around and it was obvious that nobody bought her little demonstration. She had already made herself look guilty as hell by trying to drag him off. I stepped in and spoke over her. I know everything. You've been lying to all of us. Use your mom's illness as an excuse to go out of town and meet up with Jake. Sarah's mom stood up so fast that I was concerned about her health for a moment. I walked over to support her. But whenever daughters got there first, Sarah is that true? Sarah's face was red. She opened her mouth to talk, but she just cried instead. Jake came over to me and I handed him a beer from the cooler. Sarah looked at the two of us standing together and just sobbed. The barbecue ended pretty quickly after that. The guests left as soon as they could, but Jake stuck around to watch Sarah's family lay. Into her. It was brutal. Her siblings were disappointed and disgusted that she would use their mom's illness as an excuse to sleep with another man. Our mom was appalled and couldn't stop crying. Sarah alternated between silence and sobbing throughout. Sarah packed her things and left that night. I'm still not sure where she slept. The divorce went about as well as I could hope for. The settlement was fair enough, but the real loser was Sarah's pride. I still keep in touch with her brother and one of her sisters, and they both let me know. That Sarah's family woman reputation was pretty much gone. None of her siblings hold her in the same regard they used to. For a while, she tried to return to her role of coordinating her family, but they let her know that nobody was interested in anything she had to say. 
she's still struggling to fix a strained relationship with her poor mother, who resented being used as a prop, and most of her siblings refused to talk to her. Throughout the divorce, she reached out to me multiple times. She tried to explain herself to me, saying she always had to be the perfect daughter, and the idea of having to be the perfect mother had overwhelmed her. With Jake, she didn't have that pressure. He didn't mean anything to her, and she was always going to ghost him once she played. Out the sick mother excuse. Jake didn't help her case in the slightest, and I made sure she knew that. I couldn't feel sorry for her in the least. She lied to me and cheated on me right when we had been planning on starting a family. Of our own. She also has strong along and an instant guy, and used him as a tool to make herself feel better. I still can't spare a drop of sympathy for her. I'm too busy moving on with my own life, and so was Jake. Jake and I still keep in touch, even though he lives in another city. He told me he's moving on, and he started talking to another girl. Good for him. He spent tough on me because I'm freshly divorced, but I've left Sarah where she belongs in. The past. Maybe I'll move on to some day. Bravo OP. You really put Sarah in her place. Honestly, I can't help but laugh at the absurdity of it all. Sarah thought she could juggle a sick mom excuse and a side guy? News flash. You can have your cake and eat it too. I wish I could have seen the look on her face when she realized her perfect little world was crumbling. She played with fire and got burned. Now she's left scrambling to fix her reputation trying to convince everyone she's still the perfect daughter. Good luck with that. What about you all? Have you ever had your trust shattered? Share your stories with us in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. See you next time.